that there is a bomb in Gilead. God has a healing for you, and God has a healing for this nation, and God has a healing for the nations. So we join, we join in uh, the whole with the whole world today, in the body of Christ all over the world today, as we seek God. And what we proclaim, we proclaim this day as a national day of prayer. It's a worldwide day of prayer. And I first got the idea from the Filipinos. And the Filipinos passed it on. And nations claiming this is a national day of prayer in their nation and an international day of prayer. As the world seeks God, ladies and gentlemen, the world seeks God for deliverance, not only from this coronavirus, but from sin and devastation. So we ask that you open up your heart today, get into this service. Praise God, it might be new for you. Some of you may be on the online church for the first time. Praise God, a lot of churches are closed, and this may be your first experience being on the online church. We welcome you. The online church is a part of the church. We praise God that God has the, the Internet lines open and the phone lines so we can take the gospel to you so you don't have to miss a step. Praise God. So we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this uh, National Day of Prayer. Today I'm going to teach you about fasting and prayer. We're going to look historically, we're going to, we're going to look historically at National Day of Prayer, Jackie Carter has allergies. That's her coughing. Praise God. She's got allergies. That's not the coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen. That's that yellow stuff down here in the air here in Georgia. So don't get scared. Don't, don't get off. It's not going to bounce through your, your phone or your, your computer. Praise God. We are celebrating a National Day of Fasting and Prayer. My agenda today in the next 30-some minutes is to look at at the scriptures, what scripture says about fasting and prayer. We're going to look at what Jesus said about it, what Isaiah said about it. We're going to look at what uh, uh, God did historically when people in the scriptures proclaimed a time of fasting and prayer. And we just want to bring your attention that God is in control. That's what we're all about today, ladies and gentlemen. God is in in control. Some of us have tried everything. We've tried all that we know, but we want to take a look at uh, 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 a God and give him the opportunity to do what only he can do. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been up since about uh, 3 o'clock this morning. I did go back to bed, but this thing is on me. It's on me about fasting and prayer and to teach you. And and, and uh, we're looking for a breakthrough. And uh, as I teach you, I'm teaching myself. So what you receive today is not just for you, but it's for me. Also, praise God. We're going to ask Dr. Jean Bratton, pastor of Living Water Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware, to lead us in prayer for this service. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father God, seeking your face and your goodness and your love all over this earth, Father God. Father God, we have all fallen short, Father God, and have sinned. But, Father God, we repent for our sins and we turn to you, the author and finisher of our faith. So as we go forward, Father God, let everyone who has logged on this morning be blessed because they didn't think it was robbery to spend time with you and bless our teacher and our speaker, Apostle Carter and his household, Father God. And we Lift this prayer to you in Jesus' name, Father God, proclaiming healing for those who are sick. We're praying heal, healing for those who are sick, Father God, because you said you would not plague us with the diseases of Egypt. And we thank you because we know that healing has already arrived. Cure has already arrived. And we give glory and honor to your great name in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton, pastor of Living Water Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, we praise God for the mighty work going on in Wilmington and how God continues to use you. And we thank God for all of you coming on from various states in the Union, various parts of the nation. And we have people on from the international community. Thank God for David Carter in um, 
Dubai. We thank God for Elijah. We thank God for Eunice. And thank God for Jacko and so many of our friends in Kenya. Thank God for Annika in, in Switzerland. Thank God for the, our friends in the Caribbean and the other parts of the nation and the world. And so let's turn our attention to the Lord. Praise God. Um, so many people are concerned, and I am included, about this coronavirus. But ladies and gentlemen, this coronavirus is nothing that God cannot handle. God does not want you to fear or to panic. God can control every situation. There is no situation that he cannot handle. God allows certain things to happen. Some may say, well, well, if he's a just God, why is he letting so many people die? You know, God may be letting this thing happen because he wants to get our attention and to bring our attention to, to, to our sins, not only our national sins and our local sins, not only the sins of the church, but also our individual sins, the sins of our marriages, our individual walk, the sins within our own household. And, and uh, as I was up praying this morning around 3 o'clock, and the Lord was revealing to me my sins, and, and, and God was working on me. And, and, and I'm saying, well, Lord, uh, what's this have to do with the coronavirus? Why are so many people suffering all over the world, all over the nation, people dying? And the Lord said, well, when you multiply your sins by 300 million people in America, he said, when you multiply your individual sins by 300 million people in America, just in America alone, look at the sins that are corrupting this nation. And then when I look at my own sins and the sins of the other nations, we're looking at 6 billion people, ladies and gentlemen, who grieve the Lord, who do what they feel like doing, who worship idols, who let things come between them and God, most who don't even care about God. And we look, when we multiply our individual sins by the multiplicity, the plethora of churches in this nation and the nation of this world, and the fact that many of the churches are very selective in preaching what they feel like preaching rather than listening to the Holy Spirit. When we look at the fact that the church has kicked the Holy Ghost out, many don't want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many will not obey God, but we continue to have church as usual. Well, you know, God permitted the churches to be shut down. He wants our attention. God, I mean, so many people have, have made their churches idols. They're worshiping idolatry. Uh, and and they, they're in idolatrous situations because we've got a lot of pastors who will not preach what the Bible says. We've got many pastors who are very selective in preaching. You know, a gay pastor is not going to preach uh, any sermons that deal uh, about the abomination of the gay lifestyle or the les lesbian lifestyle. An alcoholic is not going to uh, preach about the evils of alcohol. <clears throat> and and the, the selfish person is not going to preach about selfishness. And so we know how to carefully select what we feed our congregations. And you know, the Spirit of the Lord is grieved. So therefore, we have these shut-ins, we have these quarantines, we have churches closing, and there are people out there, some of you may be on there, you don't know what to do because your church is not open. Well, God wants you to stop worshiping your church and worship him. So this whole thing is an attention getter, and, we're, and I praise God that many uh, uh, leaders in the body of Christ have declared this a national day of fasting and prayer. And, and there are many people in the body of Christ who don't know what fasting is, don't know what prayer is. One person may say, well, when you fast, you don't eat any food until 6 o'clock p.m. We're asking people not to eat until 6 o'clock p.m., but if you have to take your medication, you take your medication. Uh, uh, you drink some juice, drink some water, uh, you do what you have to do. Then there are those who claim, well, if you're really fasting, then, uh, you know, you give up potato chips or you give up going to the mall or you give up. Ladies and gentlemen, 
fasting means it's a time where we, we tear our souls and we take a look at ourselves and we look at how we've come short and we cry out to the Lord for mercy and we, we, we look honestly at ourselves and, and, and stop pointing the finger at other people and blaming other people. We stop tweeting nasty stuff about people. We stop getting on Facebook and putting people down. We stop our racist activities. We stop our hatred. We stop uh, the, the uh, 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 procrastination in our households. We stop pretending to be married, and we, we stop pretending to love our children. We stop all. In, in other words, the time of fasting is to Put away our sins, not to look at the other person's sins, because a lot of us love to go to church because going to church makes us feel good because we can look at our neighbor. Yeah, she's still drinking. I can smell it on her breath. And, and we, you get in church, you smell it on your, your neighbor's breath, and you say, well, she's still drinking. And, you know, that makes you feel good because you don't drink. But you're still lying and, and telling lies and deceiving people. Uh, and, and, and see, we need to take a good look at ourselves. And this shut-in, this quarantine, this distancing ourselves from others uh, is a good time to draw a nigh unto God. Hallelujah. And so God's been dealing with me since about 3 o'clock in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's on me. So I just want to spend a few minutes with you to encourage you about fasting and praying and seeking the Lord and don't just fast and pray because it's a fashionable thing or the church is doing it. No. Let's take a look at uh, two passages of scripture, two passages and see what Jesus says about uh, fasting and praying and then we're going to take a look at what Isaiah said uh, 800, 800 years before Jesus came and said his words. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to put some Bible on this. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16, 17, and 18. Jesus said, moreover, well, let's go back to 15, because if you don't do 15, fasting and prayer ain't going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't do Matthew, if we don't do Matthew 6, 15, prayer and fasting will not work. So Matthew 6, 15, start there. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If we don't forgive people our, the sins they've committed against us and the hurts and the grievances and we continue to harbor bitterness in our heart, no manner of fasting as prayer is going to work for you or work for your nation or work for your marriage or work for the church. So Matthew 6, 15, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So we've got to forgive our mama and our daddy. We've got to forgive our brothers and sisters. We've got to forgive our friends. We've got to forgive our husband and our wife. We've got to forgive the people who hurt us. We've got to lay those things aside. We've got to walk away from the pain and the bitterness that they have caused us and release them and let them go. And don't bring it up anymore. Don't harbor those thoughts. When Satan puts those thoughts in our hearts about how somebody hurt us or uh, did us wrong, then we have the authority in the name of Jesus to cast down all vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God. We have the authority to cast down those vain imaginations. So let's do that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do that. Cast down those imaginations. Make sure that uh, we're not harboring bitterness in our heart. Because if we harbor bitterness in our heart, God is not going to listen, listen to us. Okay, let's look at the rest of Matthew 6, uh, 16 through 18. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Don't try to look r religious, looking sad, uh, 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 putting on a sad face so that people can ask you, what you do? Why are you looking like that? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. fasting. And no, you don't, you don't do that. You don't do that. Don't let them know. Uh, when you fast, it's between you and God. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, 
Wash your face. Wash your hands. Anoint your head. Don't all be going through the mall with uh, olive oil dribbling down your face so that people can see, oh, she's got olive oil dribbling down her face. Uh, she must be uh, religious. Ladies and gentlemen, that does not touch anybody. That doesn't touch God. Verse 18, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. Fasting is secret. I'm teaching this publicly and openly, but fasting is secret. And it's secret. And it's not fasting uh, so that a certain person will stop doing what they're doing or fasting so that the nation stops doing what it's doing. The sin begins with you and me, ladies and gentlemen. God revealed to, to me early this morning, the sins of this nation start with you, Leroy Carter. Start with you. And if you will not confess your sins, then, then if 300 million people throughout the nation will not confess their sins, there you have it. There you have it. And then when you wonder why was, would God allow a coronavirus to wipe out so many people? Well, let me say this to you. When the AIDS uh, virus hit, the HIV virus hit several years ago. We had people crying. I had people who had AIDS. They were crying, calling me and asking for prayer, and I prayed for them. And, and, and we are to pray when people ask us, when people ask us for, for help. We are to pray for them. And, um, uh, but then you know what happened? And, and you're going to see the same thing happening here with this coronavirus. They developed, the scientists developed, let me take some of this reverberation off this sound. The scientists developed a cure for AIDS. And all, many of those people who were crying out, they were dying of AIDS once they started taking that pill and realized, and then they realized they could still have, men could still have sex with men, and women can still have sex with women, just take the pill, then they were no longer afraid of the AIDS, AIDS uh, virus. But ladies and gentlemen, God has many more things that he will permit if we keep on playing games with him. I saw a commercial last night, a commercial on CNN. They had a commercial. And, and they're touting this pill where uh, gay marriage partners can take a pill. It's a brown pill. It's a brown capsule. And you take this pill, and they said, and, 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 and you can have safe sex with your partner. And they had two men kissing. Two men yeah. kissing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's on CNN. And they tout this pill. Okay, we've discovered this pill. And, you're, and those of you who are HIV positive, you can take this pill and you can continue to have a sex with your partner without fear. And they showed you this brown pill in the palm of a person's hand. And they had two men kissing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an abomination. It's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's getting in God's face. Okay, so a lot of people who are concerned about this coronavirus, they saw the HIV virus, and scientists, okay, they, they, they discovered a pill to kill the HIV virus, and they would do the same thing with the coronavirus. And so many people, and, and, and many people, ladies and gentlemen, they take their pills, they keep on having sex with the same sex, they keep on committing solemnly or lesbian activities, and many of them sit up in church, ladies and gentlemen, Many are pastors and church leaders, and they are defying God. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not stupid. God is going to judge. And, 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 and God is going to judge me. I'm a preacher, but I cannot judge any of them. I preach the word, and I give the example, but I've got to not allow any bitterness be in my heart towards any of them. I've got to keep my heart open and love them so that if there's an opportunity to share the word of God so that they can get saved, I will seize the moment. But ladies and gentlemen, we know how to play with God. People know how to play with God. Oh, the scientists, they will they'll get a cure. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll be back on our feet in a few months. And, uh, 
And then, then people say, well, it's a shame so many people had to die, but now we got a pill. And uh, so, so we can keep on. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad thing is a lot of people who are concerned right now, when this coronavirus is over, they're going to go back to church as usual. Yes, I'm going to say this. Many of these churches are going to go back to San having the same old kind of worship, the same old dead worship that only feeds their members. It does not edify God or glorify God. It's the same old dead worship where, <clears throat> where members stroke one another and nobody is challenged to get closer to God. The choir, choir director is still, still gay, is still a lesbian. Uh, the choir members are still gay, and they still uh, go out to their little, uh, little, little tryst, their, their little uh, uh, parties after church. They keep on doing the same thing. The, the, the deacon's still an alcoholic. Uh, the, the, the steward of the trustee is still snorting coke, and they go back to the same old, same old, same old, but yet we had church. Us had church today. God is tired of playing, ladies and gentlemen, and, and this plague is just the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look uh, uh, at Isaiah and the kind of uh, fast that Isaiah wants. But before that, let me talk about a few fasts that took place in Old Testament history where God moved, where God moved. Uh, there was one, one, one plague where God allowed a plague to come through the children to the, the congregation of Israel because Dathan and Abiram and on uh, rebelled against Moses' leadership and, and uh, about 20,000 people died in the plague. Aaron ran into the tabernacle with a censer, got some coals from the altar and put some incense in it and ran out among those who were being killed by the plague to stop the plague. God was going to wipe them all out. There was another time when God told Moses, I'll wipe them out and I'll start a new congregation, a new race of people with you. And Moses fell on his face before the Lord and cried out unto God. Even though the people were beating up on him, hating on him, Moses loved the people so much that he asked God, stop the plague. Don't kill any more people. Kill me. Take me, but spare the people. Ladies and gentlemen, we look at Ahab, as wicked as he was. Ahab, you'll see this in 2 Kings. Ahab was so wicked that he, he had everything he needed, but he wanted Naboth's vineyard. He loved the grapes that Naboth was growing in his vineyard, and Ahab coveted after uh, uh, Naboth's vineyard. And so one day uh, he went to Naboth and asked Naboth, to sell that land to him, Nabal said no. And so that night, uh, Ahab couldn't sleep, and his wife, wicked Jezebel, said, what's the matter with you? Why can't you sleep? He said, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because I asked Nabal to sell me his vineyard, and he refused. And Jezebel said, go to sleep. I'll take care of it. Uh, I'll handle it. And so, and the next day, the next day, she called the elders of, 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 of Israel together, and, and, and had two false witnesses witness against Nabal, and they lied on Nabal. And so that since all uh, the elders believed the lies of the two witnesses, they stoned Nabal to death that next day. And then Jezebel went back to her husband Ahab and said, uh, that uh, vineyard that Nabal had is yours now. Go and claim it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ahab uh, was married to a wicked woman. And so when Ahab was going to claim that land that Naboth had, God sent Elijah the prophet. God sent Elijah the prophet, and Elijah pulled uh, Ahab's coattail and told him how he had grieved the Lord. And Ahab heard, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the most wicked king on earth heard the word of the Lord, and he repented. God said, to, to Ahab, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut you off. The dogs are going to eat you up, and the dogs are going to lick lick uh, uh, your your wife's blood. They're going to eat her uh, her up on the near the wall. And 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 when Ahab rent his clothes, he threw on sackcloth and ashes and cried unto the Lord in repentance. The wicked king Ahab repented, and God sent Elijah back to Ahab and said, "Tell Ahab, I've heard his cry. I will not do." what I promised to do to him, but that punishment will come to one of his sons. 
And so we have many, many situations in the Old Testament where God held back the plague when people cried unto the Lord. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this coronavirus thing is a plague. But there are more plagues. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody talks about the plague in the, in the, in the African-American community where young people are shooting one another, killing one another. Nobody talks about that plague. That plague is killing more people than the coronavirus. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody's talking about the plague of, 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 of uh, religion that's uh, permeating our churches where people assemble but don't have a heart. For worshiping God, nobody talks about the plague of ignorance where nobody wants the Holy Ghost because nobody wants to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Everybody wants to walk in their own manner and do their own thing. Nobody wants to talk about uh, uh, the plague in their marriage where uh, there's disrespect and, and dishonor uh, of one spouse to the other or disrespect of the children or the children do not respect the family of the parents. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody wants to talk about what's happening at home, but we're always willing to go on Facebook and look at who's pointing the finger at whom, and and we we see this uh, situation and 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 who the racists are and and make this go viral. Ladies and gentlemen, before I make anything go viral, I want to make myself go viral in holiness and in righteousness. I don't want to blame somebody else or point the finger at someone else when, when sin is in my own camp. So, ladies and gentlemen, this thing's been on me since 3 o'clock this morning. And God has given us many examples of how he stopped the plague, how he stopped the plague. There was one plague when the people grumbled. They, uh, they, they got tired of the manna. God gave them food every day. All they had to do was pick the food uh, uh, at six days a week, and get a double portion on the Sabbath, on, on, on the sixth day, and just prepare it and eat it. But they got to grumbling and complaining. We're tired of this manna. We want some meat. We want some chicken. We want some KFC. We want some uh, McDonald's. Uh, we're tired of this manna. And so God uh, said, okay, you want birds. You want meat. I'll give you meat. And so God allowed birds to fly all over the camp of Israel, about three feet above the ground, and all the people had to do is just grab a bird or knock one in the head with a club, and they had meat. But the Bible says they all prepared their food, but before anyone could enjoy a mouthful, God sent a plague in the camp. Plagues are the result of sin, ladies and gentlemen. How many commentators have you heard on CNN or ABC or CBS or your news source, how many of those commentators have even entertained the idea that this plague is a result of our sins? None, none, absolutely none, none, N-O-N-E, none. And so man is trying to figure out how to solve the plague. We can do it with our own ingenuity with our own scientific knowledge, with our own medical breakthroughs. No, ladies and gentlemen, no. When you grieve the mighty God, the holy God, God has many ways of letting it come back to you to let you know that you have grieved him. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, when we know what's required of us and we continue to walk in sin, when we know that adultery is a sin and we continue to commit adultery, when we know that idolatry is a sin and we continue to, to worship idols, when we know that uh, 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 certain activities are a sin and, and so we, we gather in the church like-minded people, and, and people who continue to sin, they still have their parties on Friday night and still drink their liquor, still do their dope and come together on Sunday, but you don't hear any anti-liquor and any anti-dope messages. They continue to stroke one another and to encourage one another in doing what they're doing, and they deceive people into thinking that they are pleasing God. God is not pleased with your hand clap. God is not pleased with your noise. God is not pleased with your mass choir. God is not pleased with your mega church. God is not pleased with your fundraising ability. God is not pleased with the number of churches you build to help others. God is pleased when we worship him 
in spirit and in truth. And so we all need to come before God, declare a time of fasting, fasting and prayer. Well, let's take a look at what Isaiah says about fasting. Isaiah says in the 58th chapter, and this will bless you. I pray that you'll read it over and over again. We'll take a look at Isaiah. Then we'll bring uh, this to conclusion. Cry aloud. Here's what Isaiah says about fasting. You see, it's not the turning down of the plate that touches God. It's not giving up meat. It's not giving up your chicken dinner. It's not giving up your red wine, your glass of red wine on Sunday afternoon. Here's the fast that God wants. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. We're in Isaiah 58. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Lord, you know, we've been fasting, but you, you don't seem to be answering. Uh, what's with this, Lord? We're fasting. Uh, we turn down our place until 6 o'clock p.m., and, 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 and you don't see it. Ain't, ain't nothing happening. In fact, the, the coronavirus numbers have escalated. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, listen to this, Ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. So now what, what a church is doing, they uh, are having fun days. Fun days. You know, we all, let's have fun days. Okay, let's, uh, everybody at your house, get your bingo set out. And we have a uh, virtual bingo. Uh, uh, or, or it's a time where we're supposed to be seeking the Lord, but uh, uh, we got some people still out having pleasure, hopping their little cars or their vehicles, and they ride around and try to avoid, elude the cops, you know, elude the orders not to be out there. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. There are a lot of people in the church, ladies and gentlemen, they fast to start a debate. They want to argue with you about the way you fast. They want to argue about you about this. We've got more argument of people in the church than there is in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Isaiah saying, you will not fast. This is not the fast God wants to hear to make your voice be heard, to elevate you above everyone else. Verse 5, is it such a fast that I have chosen? This is God asking. Is this such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast? that I have chosen, here's God's chosen fast, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the turning down of the plate. It's not the avoidance of certain foods. It's not turning off your TV for a couple hours. It's not uh, uh, not looking to movies for a couple of hours. It's not waiting to, until 7 o'clock p.m. to go to the movies. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Every one of us can benefit from this verse. Loose the bands of wickedness. Stop the wickedness. Stop the hatred of one another. Stop the division. Stop the tweeting. Stop the texting. Stop the blaming and finger pointing. Stop blaming the blacks or the whites or the Mexicans or the Republicans or the Democrats. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming the Methodists or the Episcopals or the Pentecostals or the Charismatics. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. You can undo someone's burden by preparing a meal for them. If you know they're hungry, prepare a meal for them. Take that burden off them. You've got plenty. 
Share some of your toilet paper with your neighbors. You got a whole garage full of toilet paper. Ain't that much wipe in the world. You, ain't, you, you will never, ever, ever. I'm not going there. Gene Bratton, I will not go there. To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. Let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Break every yoke. Every yoke. Verse 7, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that ye thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When was the last time you brought a poor person home with you to feed that person? Or give the person some clothes from your closet, or some of your shoes, or, 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 or some of your tools, or, or, or uh, give a poor person one of your extra vehicles that you ain't driving anyway. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, verse 7, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Verse 8, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Re-reward, meaning God will have your back. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Listen to this, politicians. If thou take away the, from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose water fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the restorer, the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If we break off our sins, ladies and gentlemen, then our posterity, our future generations, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will build on the foundation of holiness and righteousness that we lived upon. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, God says you're doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And then I want to read two verses in chapter 59 of Isaiah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us why there are plagues, why there are famines and pestilences and diseases, why there are things happening in individual households and individual lives, why things are happening in churches and in corporations and in the government. The, 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 the Bible tells us why this government is crumbling. The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is God's ear heavy, that it cannot hear. The Bible says, but your iniquities and mine have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. All of us have sinned, ladies and gentlemen, and come short of the glory of God. And every one of us, under the sound of my voice, and everyone who will play this recording, has secret sins, hidden sins, things we hide from one another 
but God sees all. And it's these iniquities that bring on plagues like the coronavirus. Well, tell me again, how, how, how can you say that? Because when you multiply your iniquities, and I multiply my iniquities by 300,000, 300 million people, 300 million people, that's 300 million people in this nation alone who are grieving God with hidden and secret sins. Oh, we're a religious nation. We know how to be religious. But when we get on a one-on-one -on -one with God, let God wake you up 3 o'clock in the morning on a one-on-one, -on -one, and he shows you your sins and shows you how when your sin is multiplied by 300 million, then you see why this nation is in trouble. And then when you multiply your sins by the numbers of people in the world, 6 billion, then you see why plagues come upon the world. And God's, God's call is, call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And then God has a cure, not only for the coronavirus plague, but for the plague of sin that has gripped your life and my life, that has gripped the church, that has gripped the nation, that has gripped uh, the international community. God has a cure for it all. And the cure is found in Second Chronicles 7.14. We'll close with this. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, and this is God speaking, ladies and gentlemen, if my people, which are called by my name, He's talking about Christians, people who claim to be Christians. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Let me repeat that. If my people, God says, it's a promise, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then I promise I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, call upon the name of the Lord. Be obedient to the word of God. Let us break off our sins. Let us confess our sins. Let us call upon the Lord. Let us turn from our own wicked, selfish ways. Let us repent. And let us let the Lord get the glory and the honor. For we are fearfully and wonderfully made that we might worship him. God is calling us to worship him. God is calling the church. Church, break off your sins. Break off that religious yoke and, and, and all those things that do not even touch the heart of God. Break them off. Stop leading people Sunday after Sunday in religious things that do not touch the heart of God. Stop permitting people to live any way they want to. Challenge the people. God is saying to us preachers, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. And even while we blow the trumpet and sound the alarm, we must be holy unto the Lord. We've got to break off our own selfish sins, our own uh, 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 sins that please are for our own pleasure rather than for the pleasure of God. Every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we declare this to be a national day of fasting and prayer. Perhaps you cannot uh, uh, last until 6 o'clock this, this evening, your time. But go into prayer. When this service is over, spend some time before the Lord. Spend, spend some time. I mean, do a different thing. Stop uh, criticizing the preacher. Stop hating on the preacher. Stop hating on the preacher because the preacher brought the truth. Stop uh, uh, trying to justify your own lifestyle, your own sins. Too many are doing that, and we do it every Sunday. Just stop and take a good look at yourself, and I'm going to look at myself and say, Lord, I am to blame 
I am the cause. I am a contributor to this worldwide uh, uh, plague. It is because of my sins, God. And so, and break off our sins. Let us break off our sins. Let us call upon the Lord and, and, and be delivered. And if you know that you know that you know that you know, ladies and gentlemen, that you're not saved, you just join the church. You, you go to church because, you know, your mama went to church, your daddy went to church, great-grandpa built the church, and you know your heart's not right with God. Get saved. Humble yourself before the Lord. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop playing games with God. Let's get right with God. Let's get saved. And, 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 and then there are times we just got to zip our lips. Just don't say anything. When people offend you, don't say anything. Just let them go crazy. Just let, let them act crazy. They'll come around. They'll be like... Uh, 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 little Bo Peep sheep, they wag their tail coming back to you. Keep on loving them. After they've condemned you, they've beaten you up with their words, and, they, and their actions are not Christian actions. You keep on loving them. Leave them alone. They'll come home wagging their tails before, behind them. And forgive them. Forgive them. Ladies and gentlemen, I've given to you what God has given to me, that this National Day of Fasting is effective. Fasting touches the heart of God when we start with our own confession of our sins and not point the finger at others. When we confess, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all iniquity. Then if 300 million people would do the same thing, what a mighty nation this would be. But God knows that all the people in America are not going to confess. He knows all the people in Kenya are not going to confess. He knows all the people in Nicaragua are not going to confess. He knows all the people in Brazil are not going to confess their sins. So God, God uh, uh, reduces the number that he requires in order for him to bless. He, bless. he said, if my people, which are called by my name, Christians, the born again, the blood washed, will humble themselves and, and uh, break off their sins. And if we obey him, call upon him, then he will hear from heaven. If we turn from our wicked ways, he will hear from heaven. He promises he will hear. And he'll forgive our sins. He'll even heal the land. Let's believe God. Let's do what God requires of us. Let's us do, let us do the Isaiah 58 fast. And to God be the glory. I pray that when this coronavirus is over, we are better people of God. And, 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 and if, if, if churches never open again, the church is in you, ladies and gentlemen. Let Christ be in you, the hope of glory. Let in Christ, let Christ be in you. Then you build up your, your brother and your sister in, in, in holiness and in righteousness. Let's trust the Lord. Let's do what he says do. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you. We honor you, Lord God. We proclaim this day as a day of fasting and prayer, that we spend seasons with you this day. Oh God, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. We have all sinned and come short of your glory. God, we pray for our brothers and sisters all over this nation, all over the world. We pray for the unsaved, that they will know you in the pardon of their sins. God, forgive us for being bitter and selfish. Forgive us, God, for putting others down. Forgive us for thinking more highly of ourselves. God, forgive us for dishonoring you, for dishonoring you, Holy Spirit, for grieving your spirit, Lord to return to the shepherd and bishop of our souls in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for all mankind. And you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, Father, we ask that you bring healing to this nation and to the nations. Lord, bring healing to the souls of mankind. And we thank you and we bless you 
and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. We're going to stop the recording, but we'd like for you to stay on and chat with you for a little while. And uh, we pray that you'll share this recording. Uh, probably uh, we've had uh, slow time in processing these because of the number of online churches using this service. But uh, if, if you don't get this recording until tomorrow, send it to someone else so they can be blessed by it. And then if you have any questions, any comments, give me a call. Give me a call. Let's stay before the Lord. <laughs>